somewhere in the darkest depths of deepest space where the light of sanity shines quite dim there was a strange little world called Diana. Diana had two little moons called Ding and Dong. Sometimes visiting spaceships wouldn't see Ding because it was so small and shiny, and they would bump Ding out of orbit. Oops. Where Ding lands is a matter of chance. Nobody knows where Ding might land next time, but most Dianans, including insurance companies, would say they really don't mind, just as long as it's not on top of them. The tourism office always polishes the small moon up nicely before putting it back in orbit again. This is why Diana is known as the only planet in the galaxy that plays ping pong with its own moon. Diana is a popular tourist destination, and visitors come from all over to enjoy Diana's white sandy beaches, the beautiful green forests, and to watch little marsupial breaking dolphins swim backwards through the tour boat's propeller in the strong current of the Watusi River. On Diana there lived a man named Dr. Glichstein. Guten Tag. And his little dog, Fluffy. Woof. Dr. Glichstein was a kind of scientist, and Fluffy was not his assistant. Dr. Glichstein looked a little odd, because quantum physics is a lot like ordinary physics, except you spend a lot of time looking for your eyebrows. He usually worked in the lounge of his house, because he'd already blown the garage up too many times. Apparently, a lot of things happen by accident in quantum physics. Long ago, when Dr. Glickstein was much younger and more quantum, he invented a few things. The luminous paperclip, so that people could find their paperwork when the lights were out. And the self-cleaning mousetrap, which got rid of the bodies and cleaned itself. It seemed to be a good idea until somebody pointed out that cats were invented about 10 million years ago, and they were much cheaper because they also ate the evidence. Fluffy was a little dog who lived with the doctor. The doctor was very fond, I mean fond, of Fluffy, so he gave him a flame-proof doggy jacket. It was dull grey, but it had a tartan pattern on it. Fluffy liked his doggy jacket and wore it all the time. When things went bang, he could just roll over dust himself off and quickly scamper off with the doggy jacket flapping on his back. Fluffy had lasted a lot longer than all of the doctor's previous pets. Sometimes the doctor had to sweep them into a dustpan after something he was working on went bang. But Fluffy was smart, so he stayed away from the funny things that the doctor worked on. Fluffy had a little list in his doggy brain. If he saw things that smelled funny, made bubbling noises, defied gravity, warped the space-time continuum, went bang, or just turned inside out by themselves, he just stayed the heck away from them. That way, Fluffy avoided seeing the inside of a dustpan. So far. Ach, nein! Oh no, not again. Even the mouse holes in the doctor's house had little automatic blast-proof doors that closed at the first sign of danger. Fluffy was a very happy little dog, who spent a lot of his time hiding under furniture and avoiding getting blown up by the doctor. But elsewhere, inside the house, there were things that weren't happy. Not happy at all. They were ugly things. Horrible, scratchy, and icky things. They were the mutant cockroaches that lived in the nooks and crannies and cupboards in the kitchen. They had two heads and two pairs of antenna and ate everything they could find. They ate the paint off the walls and even the spa out of the getty. 
Not even a tin of baked beans was safe anymore. The mutant cockroaches were big. So big that even the mice had packed their mousy things and left the house. They were so big and bold they would even dare to chase Fluffy down the passage. Fluffy hoped the other dogs in the neighborhood didn't see that. That would be very embarrassing. Fluffy stayed out of the kitchen unless he was with the doctor. The first time the doctor saw one of those creatures sitting on the wall tiles in the kitchen, he got a fright and said, Mein goodness! Look, Fluffy, what a beast! The doctor took a fly swatter and hit it hard. Bang! It went, but it didn't go splat. The roach just shook its heads, growled at him and staggered off with two minor headaches. Fluffy whined a little and backed away. Then the doctor saw another one. Putting down the useless fly swatter, he reached under the sink. He brought out a large hammer. Gesundheit! He cried and swung hard. Bang! It went. That will fix him, yeah! He cried enthusiastically as he pulled the hammer out of the hole in the tiles. But the roach was still there, waving its slightly bent feelers and looking at him in a threatening manner. It growled at him angrily, climbed out of the crater and lurched away with a slight limp until it vanished behind a cupboard. Some spice bottles inside made clinking noises as they fell over. The doctor rubbed his chin and looked worriedly at Fluffy, who was wondering where the mice had said they were moving to. The doctor went to his drawing board and started to draw things on it with a marker pen. From where Fluffy sat looking at the drawings on the whiteboard, he recognized a mutant cockroach, a hammer and a fly swatter. The fly swatter and the hammer had big red crosses drawn through them. The doctor stood there scratching his head in a way that reminded Fluffy of the time the dining room table had vanished in a bright flash and a thunderclap. Then the doctor snapped his fingers, said, Eureka! and went outside to what was left of the garage. A little while later, the doctor came back inside carrying a crude looking device. It was dark and long and metallic and old and heavy looking. Fluffy knew it was time to look for something to hide under again. The doctor placed one end against his shoulder and put a finger on the trigger. Blitzkrieg! He cried. Then, with a funny little grin and a glassy look in his eyes, he marched into the kitchen to make war on the mutant cockroaches. By the time the doctor was finished, not a single thing went clink, or rustled, or even breathed in the kitchen. In the distance, very faintly, Fluffy could hear sirens getting closer. Everywhere in the kitchen there were bits of broken tile, broken woodwork, and dead mutant roaches. Nothing moved. Not a feeler, not even to wave a little white flag. There! The doctor declared, grinning victoriously. He was grinning because he'd decided that the kitchen needed redecorating anyway. Which just goes to show, folks, that in the end, Violence might not solve everything, but it has its uses. And at any rate, it proves that violence can achieve far more than guitars ever will. The house was safe again. Although a little bit more untidy perhaps. But at least Fluffy didn't have to worry about big nasty two-headed mutant cockroaches chasing him down the hall anymore. Fluffy went to fetch his little red rubber ball. It had been partially melted in one of the doctor's explosions and went dingle as he dropped it at the doctor's feet. The doctor reached down and gave Fluffy a nice scratch behind the ears before playing ball with him. Woof! said Fluffy happily. <laughs> <laughs>